Y'all, I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, please join me as we sing together, God of the Ages. chapter, beginning with verse 7. For thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest points of the earth, among them the blind and the lame. Those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come. And with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their lives shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So friends, we're in the in-between times today. Uh, Epiphany is January the 6th, and it's January the 2nd, and next week is January the 9th. So we're going to sort of have epiphany today. So we're going to sing We Three Kings together. Although I, I've got to say this, everybody knows there weren't three kings, right? Everybody knows that. There were three gifts, not three kings. They also really weren't kings. They were just uh, astrologers from a faraway land. And that ought to give us great confidence that God calls even people that don't know who God is to be part of God's kingdom. 
and they're brought, drawn to him. So I think it's a fun song to sing. I hope you'll help AJ sing because uh, she said a while ago if she gets a little froggy, she may wear out on us. So we'd like to hear y'all sing it. Everybody knows this song. Uh, we, ought, we could just have the men sing it, but we won't. Uh, but as you're able, would you stand as we sing We Three Kings of Oreo? We Three Kings of Oreo Sunday of the month and also the first Sunday of the year and so we'll be having Holy Communion this morning as you all probably already know in the United Methodist Church all are invited to come to the table if you're unable to walk or come up here it, don't feel bad about that at all just raise your hand so you remind me and I'll bring you communion in a little while we're doing communion just we're back to using bread but we're following uh, some rules and I'm gonna say it now and I'll say it again in a little while. When you come forward to the table, if you were here Christmas Eve, you saw how we did it. I just want you to put your hands like this and I will take the bread and dip it in. So this, and I'm wearing gloves when I do that. So we're not, the only person touching the bread and the grape juice is you. And we aren't sharing those germs with everybody else. So uh, there's never been anybody get sick or die from communion as far as I know ever in the whole world, but we're being careful. 
and uh, we want to make sure that we stay careful. Anyway, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, friends, let's uh, sing, if you will, O Master, let me walk with thee. We'll sing together. as you're able, would you please stand for the reading of the gospel? The gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is as close to the Father's heart who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. God. And you may be seated. So this message is entitled, How Grace Changes Everything. The truth is, we need a little more grace in our world. 
Jesus came into the world and brought grace. Before that, everything was legal. They had the law. Moses gave them the law. Everything was according to the law. Everything was, did I follow the rules? And the rules were so scary that the Ten Commandments were turned into 613 other commandments so that you couldn't get near the Ten. It was unlawful to even untie your donkey on the Sabbath if it took two hands. <coughs> you could never live up to the standard. Nobody could. And if you can't live up to the standard, then why try? Jesus comes into the picture, according to this passage from John, grace upon grace. And we mark that day with so much importance that we changed. It used to be we called it B.C. and A.D. Now we call it B.C.E. and C.E., whatever. That day marks the difference between before and now. Everything has changed, but we live in a time where nothing seems to have changed. The thing that is missing, the thing that's not here, is this part where it says here that we are called to be children of God. We're supposed to be Jesus Christ for the community. We're the ones that are supposed to be different. You know, you've heard it said, I've heard this growing up a lot, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Well, that's, a, that's okay, but that's not Jesus. What Jesus would say, if you don't have anything nice to say, say something nice. Grace upon grace. And you know, we have some work to do, don't we? Because we live in a world where that just seems so odd. Nobody just seems to be filled with grace. Nobody is out there offering grace and forgiveness and kindness. We all want punishment and we want it our way and we want it when we want it, the way we want it, and by gollies, we want it right now. In my view, we're looking sideways and not up for the solutions. Somehow we think it's going to be a, a political solution or a financial solution. Oh, if my 401k is just big enough or if the right person is in charge. Friends, since Jesus came to this planet, the right person has been in charge. That hasn't changed. He sits at the right hand of the Father. He has given us the assignment to be Jesus Christ on this planet, the hands and feet of Jesus for this community and for the world. I was thinking yesterday about what it means to have inherited God's grace. I mean, I, I don't deserve it. I mean, some of y'all think I'm just Lily White. I am not. She's sitting back there. <laughs> it's Lily Chapman. But... No, I, I'm, uh, I, you know, I've got thoughts that are impure and ideas that are wrong. And, and I haven't done everything perfect or even close to perfect. And just like y'all, I can put on a front and I can do stuff. One of the, somebody asked me not too long ago why I like to wear a robe on Sunday is because I kind of take Jack and put him off to the side and put the robe on so that I have the uniform of the office. And hopefully God is, speaks through me and you don't just hear that ignorant Jack up here talking all the time. Because I can be just as sinful and wrong as anybody. I do not deserve God's amazing grace. I don't deserve the tasks I have in front of me. I don't deserve this wonderful church. I don't deserve Kathy or my children. I didn't earn it. I was watching a movie a little while ago this morning. and uh, It's a very funny movie, by the way. It's uh, Help Me Out. It's Grandkids. Help Me Out, Harley. Grand. What'd you say? Grandkids and Grandpa, Grandpa, Grandkid and Grandpa Wars or something like that. It's, it's hilariously funny. But anyway, in this movie, uh, the daughter is leaning up against her dad and uh, she says, you know, everything was fine. And he said, well, it wasn't fine. You went to your mom. He said, because of the way I was, because of the way I was, I missed two years of your growing up because I was being rigid about your boyfriend or whatever. Grace is the solution to so many of the things that we think we can solve. 
Sometimes the very best action you can take is done. And you know what? A lot of times stuff works its way out. And the opposite of grace is us thinking we're in control and we can fix it. Now, you know, we would like it much better if Jesus would have snapped his fingers and done away with sin. It'd be easier, wouldn't it? But you know, the problem with that is that God wants us to come to him willingly. He wants us to volunteer. Years ago, we had a thing in the United Methodist Church in the Texas Conference called Partners in Mission. Kathy and I went on a mission trip. I've talked about it many times to Costa Rica with Partners in Mission. The National Church, or the International Church, calls it Volunteers in Mission, V-I-M. And Rick Goodrich, who at one time was the assistant to the bishop here, said he never liked that because it's more than a volunteer. It's a partner in ministry. And so you're really not partnering. I mean, you're not volunteering to be saved. You've already been saved, but you're partnering with God to do the work of the kingdom now. It's a partnership. Partnerships mean what? It means everybody works. Some, now, everybody doesn't have the same job, right? Sometimes in partnerships, one guy has the money, the other one has the work. Sometimes one of them has the knowledge, the other one has the ability. Whatever it is, God has given us the program. We should partner with God to be a part of this revolution that changes everything. And in fact, I believe it changed the world. Now, I haven't given up on that idea. In fact, 2022, I, I think, is going to be a great year for us at the church. In the church. All churches. I think people are crying out for something. You know, millennials don't join things anymore. And, you know, I don't make a big deal about that. Although, we love for people to go ahead and say, I want to be a part or a member. Because guests get treated one way. Members understand the partnerships maybe a little bit better. But we all work together for the same purpose. We and the Baptist down the street, the Assembly of God over there, we're all on the same team. We're not in competition. It would be my prayer that every single church within 100 miles of this place will be filled to the brim next week. And there's enough people that need it to be there. In fact, there's enough people that say they're Christian to fill it up. But sometimes we forget that it's not just good enough to say it. We've got to do it. And if we don't show up, I mean, you remember the membership vows, right? I, I, I agree to be a part of this local church with my prayers, presence, gifts, service, and we added witness a few years ago. I mean, sometimes for some people, it's the biggest gift they can do is just to be here. And sometimes that's inspirational to some of the rest of us. Y'all didn't get to meet him because he never came on Sunday, but John Bremner lived on somewhere over on Young Street, just uh, a little bit south of Fairmont. John walked to church every Saturday. Rain or snow or sleet, didn't matter. I don't know what he got out of that, but I got a lot out of that. Because there's a lot of days I wake up and say, I really don't want to do that. But I don't have to walk for three and a half hours to get there. I don't have to do all that. I can get my car and get there in just a minute. What I found out is, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff that I'm really lazy about. And so are we all. We're, we're blessed with so much that we don't really realize the gift that the people gave us back in 1937 when they started a church on this corner over here in 1940 some odd when they built the building and, and all the, the stuff that happened over the years. People had a dream and a vision. It must have been a powerful dream and they built this for it to do something, not so it would wind away and do nothing. And over the years, it's had ebbs and flows. And part of that is because the church sometimes starts to think more about surviving than it does about serving. It doesn't take a lot of people to make a difference. We had 49 kids that we gave angel tree gifts to. I don't know, I didn't count how many contributors we had, but it was probably a little over half of that. And every year somebody says, well, why can't we get more names? Well, we can. And probably we should. Bill Nash, we sent, I think, 11 kids to his camp last year. 
You know, we got that to look. How are we going to do this year? How are we going to change or serve or be a part of this community in 2022? What are the resources we can best use to make a difference? How do we say those prayers that John Wesley put out as a covenant prayer that say, Oh God, let me be employed or unemployed, but let it be for you. Let me be well or let me be sick, but let me be for you, oh God. You see, the problem is we don't really appreciate the grace that God gave us. We're so used to it. It's kind of like the weather. We were kind of used to 80s in December. And some of us kind of liked it. I liked it. The grass was growing. My cows didn't need to be fed. That might change after this weekend. I mean, it was a 50 degree difference. It's a shock, right? We get used to things. But I want to tell you, this is the truth. You guys, you can observe this if you want to. In the, when it gets to be cold, like now, and it goes from 80 to 50, you'll see people wearing big, heavy coats. Because we're not used to it. When it goes the other way, in the summertime when it starts to get cool, is what I'm talking about. I got my brains fried. But when it gets to 50 after it's been cold, we're back in our shorts again. 50 is the same 50, right? Today, it's a little under 70 in this room. Y'all are pretty comfortable. If I had it this cold in the summer, you'd be freezing. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me, would you? 68 is still 68. But it's, a, it's the difference, right? Well, we live in a world right now where we're the catalyst for change. It's us, people. We're the ones that God sent to make a difference. God chose us. We were all chosen before you were ever knitted together in your mother's womb to make a difference in the kingdom. And some of you say, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, start with being here. That helps. But secondly, start to look for the ways in which the mission field, this area around us, need help. This community has stuff going on in it that I promise you are breaking the heart of Jesus Christ. I mean, we could name the big stuff, right? Sex trafficking, drugs, burglaries, robberies, violence. Let me tell you, there's some smaller stuff breaking God's heart too. The times we forget to be a positive force in the world, to say something nice, to lift up others, to elevate them from the muck and mire of this world we live in into the kingdom, to let them know that there's hope beyond where we can see. There's something bigger than what we see. There's something more powerful. The Gospel of John says it so beautifully. When you think of the ways that this words are written down, in the beginning was the Word, talking about Jesus. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. And what has come into being with Him is life. The life that was the light of all people. Not just a few. The light shines in the darkness. And friends, the world we live in, the darkness that's out there, cannot and it will not overcome it. The Word became flesh and lived among us. We've seen His glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is so close to His Father's heart and who has made Him known. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shows us what grace is. Tore down fences. People from Samaria, that God forsaken place, He loved them too. Remember the woman at the well? He offered her living water. He didn't say, just because you're Samaria, I'm not going to talk to you. The, the, the lepers that everybody else in the whole community had to say, stay away from, He welcomed them and not only did He welcome them, He healed them. So I guess what I'm saying, friends, as we look out into 2022, grace can change everything. 
What will be my part and your part in bringing grace to this community this year? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Friends, as you're able, would you please stand? If you can. I'm going to give you some rules, though. Uh, we're going to do the passing of the peace without moving our feet. <laughs> we're going to just turn around and wave at people and say, peace be with you. But we're not going to walk around. We're not going to do all that stuff. We're just going to wave at everybody like that. That's really the way it was supposed to be done originally anyway. But... <laughs> There you go. See, see how that works? It's so quiet. Everybody's peace, peace up there. Okay, you can be seated. <laughs> That's the seventh inning stretch of worship. We'll have to figure out a song, and uh, instead of take me out to the ball game, it'll be uh, take me back to worship. In, in less than a minute. <laughs> yep, good idea. So, uh, again, when communion happens this morning, I will be tearing off the bread and dipping it for you and, uh, and handing it to you. Your hands are going to be cupped up like that. And uh, if y'all think this is weird, I do too, but it's the way it is. It's more back to normal than we were, and I like it myself. So. Yeah, the communion offering up here, uh, you know, all through December, that went to Beth's Children's Home. Kathy and I will be delivering a check there to them, whatever we came up with for all of December. This month, the communion offering uh, will be going to Human Relations Day, uh, which is uh, one of the seven days in the Methodist Church that we honor. And uh, it goes to ministries related to human relations of different kinds. It's one of the great things we do as a Methodist church. So nickels, dimes, and quarters here, offering in the back. We're not passing the offering plate back. We're not quite back to that normal yet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you had formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our life and salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born. And in your signs and witnesses in every age throughout the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us... He took bread. He gave thanks to you and he broke the bread. Giving it to his disciples, he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to the disciples. He said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, 
and ministry into the whole world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Friends, the table is prepared. Anne's going to play some beautiful music. And uh, you're invited to come.
good servant. Thank you. Friends, we've been to the place where heaven and earth meet. We've received God's blessing for today. Uh, we remember that blessing is overflowing with grace. And so as we go from this place, let us share that grace with the community where we live, the family we live with, all the people we're hanging with, whatever that is. And as we're about to close the service, would you please stand as we sing together where he leaves me. I can hear today, no piano, just us. <clears throat> this is where we're headed, right? Let's sing this together. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him, with him, all Happy New Year. Go in peace.
Trying to get some more food. 